Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Bell, Assistant Curator at the Norton Simon Museum. As part of our encounters with the collection series focusing on drawing, I'll discuss the work of the prolific 17th century landscape painter and draftsman, Claude Lorraine. Claude was born in the French town of Chaman in 1600, and around 1617 he moved to Italy where he studied with leading artists. Though his paintings were widely collected, Claude rarely parted with his drawings, giving away only 12 of the roughly 1,200 he produced over the course of his lifetime. In 1970, Norton Simon purchased an album of 60 drawings that were likely compiled by the artist's heirs, though Simon ultimately sold all but seven. Together, they represent the diversity and range of Claude's approach to drawing. With the museum's recent reopening, I was able to see these drawings in person for the first time in over a year. It's easy to spend hours looking at each of them, but for now, I'll take us through one of my favorites, titled Hilly Countryside, which Claude produced in the middle of his career around 1640. Like many of Claude's landscape drawings, this one wasn't a study for a painting, but rather an autonomous composition. He began the drawing by outlining a rectangular frame, indicating that he intended to create a self-contained scene rather than a loose sketch. Claude composed the drawing in pen and ink with shades of brown wash, or diluted ink applied with a brush, and experimented with different techniques to set a particular mood. Looming trees dominate the expansive countryside, shaped by blotches of ink wash and punctuated with swirls and hatch marks made in pen to evoke dense foliage and the texture of bark. The left side of the central tree trunk is dappled with sunlight, an effect achieved by leaving the cream-colored paper exposed in contrast to dark brown ink. The cliff faces and billowing clouds across the valley are similarly illuminated, which unifies the drawing under a shared light source. In distant parts of the landscape, Claude relied on the softening properties of wash to atmospherically blur shapes that may be vegetation, or perhaps a flock of sheep grazing on a rocky slope. Hidden in this vast landscape are two figures, barely visible above the watery forms of the tree line. They are expressive despite their small size, as if in conversation they turn their faces towards one another, while the taller of the pair gestures may be in admiration towards the towering trees with an outstretched arm composed only of two deft pen strokes. Claude's landscape drawings hover somewhere between real and ideal, based on his observations of the Roman countryside, which he arranged into invented compositions. Such an approach appealed to the Italy-obsessed 18th-century British elite, who collected Claude's idyllic drawings after his death in 1682. These landowners used new fortunes acquired through colonial and industrial enterprises to enclose and improve their country properties with monumental landscaping projects. Sought-after garden designers like William Kent, who was also a painter, struck a balance between the natural forms of the English countryside and the Italianate pastoral fantasies of works like Claude's to maintain the area's original character while also incorporating curated paths and views. Such gardens were meant to create an encounter similar to that of the two wanderers in hilly countryside, who are overwhelmed by the wild yet ordered beauty of their environment. Like estate gardens, this drawing was only accessible to a few, but rather than being an ostentatious display of wealth and taste, it was shown to friends with the quiet goal of collegial artistic enjoyment. Today, the museum is fortunate to share Claude's private vision with the public. In looking carefully, we can imagine Claude's creative journey through this landscape, making deliberate choices with every pen and brushstroke as he composed an idealized image of the world around him.